Okay, you guys here? Got it? Okay. All right. Thank you, all of you, for coming out this morning. Wow, that's weird when you can hear yourself. Thank you for coming out for the worship of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, on this Palm Sunday, Passion Sunday. This is kind of an unusual way to do church, but I think one of the great things we're going to take away from this is to realize how fortunate we are to be able to practice our religion basically in freedom where there's a lot of Christians throughout the world that are dying every day because they are Christian and they have to worship in secret uh, unless the uh, hostile government or hostile religions, as the case may be, persecutes them and puts them to death. So we praise God for the ability to do this in such a time of duress. Let's go ahead and begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who made heaven and earth. earth. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. And you forgave the iniquity of my sin. Almighty God, merciful Father, I, before the merciful Lord, sinner, confess unto you my sins and iniquities, with which I have ever offended you, and justly deserve your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor, sinful being. Upon this your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. Lift up your heads, O gates, and be lifted up, O ancient doors. Who is this King of glory? Lift up your heads, O gates, and lift them up, O ancient doors. Who is this King of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. Glory be to the Lord be with you. And also with you. Almighty and everlasting God, you sent your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, to take upon himself our flesh and to suffer death upon the cross. Merciful grant that we may follow the example of his great humility and patience and be made partakers of his resurrection. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Mm -hmm. The Old Testament reading for the Sunday of the Passion is from Isaiah chapter 50. The Lord God has given me the tongue of those who are taught, that I may know how to sustain with a word him who is weary. Morning by morning he awakens, he awakens my ear, to hear as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I turned not backward. I gave my back to those who strike, and my cheeks to those who pull out the beard. I hid not my face from disgrace and spitting. But the Lord God helps me. Therefore, I have not been disgraced. Therefore, I have set my face like a flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who is my adversary? Let him come near to me. Behold, the Lord God helps me. Who will declare me guilty? 
This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Christ entered once for all into the holy places by means of his own blood, thus securing an eternal redemption. Therefore, he is the mediator of a new covenant, so that those who are called may receive the promised eternal inheritance. He sent redemption to his people. He has commanded his covenant forever. The epistle for the Sunday of the Passion is from Philippians chapter 2. Have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself by taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men. And being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. He humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. The passion of our Lord is recorded by St. Matthew. When Jesus had finished all these sayings, he said to his disciples, You know that after two days the Passover is coming, and the Son of Man will be delivered up to be crucified. Then the chief priests and the elders of the people gathered in the palace of the high priest, whose name was Caiaphas, and plotted together in order to arrest Jesus by stealth and kill him. But they said not during the feast, lest there be an uproar among the people. Now when Jesus was at Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, a woman came up to him with an alabaster flask of very expensive ointment, and she poured it on his head as he reclined at table. And when the disciples saw it, they were indignant, saying, Why this waste? For this could have been sold for a large sum and given to the poor. But Jesus, aware of this, said to them, Why do you trouble the woman? For she has done a beautiful thing to me. For you always have the poor with you, but you will not always have me. In pouring this ointment on my body, she has done it to prepare me for burial. Truly I say to you, wherever this gospel is proclaimed in the whole world, what she has done will also be told in memory of her. Then one of the twelve, whose name was Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priests and said, What will you give me if I deliver him over to you? And they paid him thirty pieces of silver. And from that moment he sought an opportunity to betray him. Now on the first day of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus, saying, Where will you have us prepare for you to eat the Passover? He said, Go into the city to a certain man and say to him, The teacher says, My time is at hand. I will keep the Passover at your house with my disciples. And the disciples did as Jesus had directed them and they prepared the Passover. When it was evening, he reclined at table with the twelve. And as they were eating, he said, Truly I say to you, one of you will betray me. And they were very sorrowful, and began to say to him one after the other, Is it I, Lord? He answered, He who has dipped his hand in the dish with me will betray me. The Son of Man goes as it is written of him, but woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that man if he had not been born. Judas, who would betray him, answered, Is it I, Rabbi? Jesus said to him, You have said so. Now as they were eating, Jesus took bread, and after blessing it, broke it, and gave it to the disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body. And he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will not drink again of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. And when they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus said to them, You will all fall away because of me this night. For it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go before you to Galilee. Peter answered him, 
Though they all fall away because of you, I will never fall away. Jesus said to him, Truly I tell you, this very night, before the rooster crows, you will deny me three times. Peter said to him, Even if I must die with you, I will not deny you. And all the disciples said the same. Then Jesus went with them to a place called Gethsemane. And he said to his disciples, Sit here while I go over there and pray. And taking with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, he began to be sorrowful and troubled. Then he said to them, My soul is very sorrowful, even to death. Remain here and watch with me. And going a little farther, he fell on his face and prayed, saying, My father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. And he came to the disciples and found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, So, could you not watch with me one hour? Watch and pray that you may not enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again, for the second time, he went away and prayed, My father, if this cannot pass unless I drink it, your will be done. And again he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were heavy. So leaving them again, he went away and prayed for the third time, saying the same words again. Then he came to the disciples and said to them, Sleep and take your rest later on. See, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. While he was still speaking, Judas came, one of the twelve, and with him a great crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests and the elders of the people. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, The one I will kiss is the man. Seize him. And he came up to Jesus at once and said, Greetings, Rabbi. And he kissed him. Jesus said to him, Friend, do what you came to do. They came up and laid hands on Jesus and seized him. And behold, one of those who were with Jesus stretched out his hand and drew his sword and struck the servant of the high priest and cut off his ear. Then Jesus said to him, Put your sword back into its place, for all those who take the sword will perish by the sword. Do you think that I cannot appeal to my Father and he will at once send me more than twelve legions of angels? But how then should the scriptures be fulfilled that it must be so? At that hour, Jesus said to the crowds, Have you come out as against a robber with swords and clubs to capture me? Day after day, I sat in the temple teaching, and you did not seize me. But all this has taken place that the scriptures of the prophets might be fulfilled. Then all the disciples left him and fled. Then those who had seized Jesus led him to Caiaphas, the high priest, where the scribes and the elders had gathered. And Peter following him at a distance as far as the courtyard of the high priest and going inside he sat with the guards to see the end now the chief priests and the whole council were seeking false testimony against Jesus that they might put him to death but they found none though many false witnesses came forward at last two came forward and said this man said I am able to destroy the temple of God and to rebuild it in three days and the high priest stood up and said, Have you no answer to make? What is it that these men testify against you? But Jesus remained silent. And the high priest said to him, I adjure you by the living God. Tell us if you are the Christ, the Son of God. Jesus said to him, You have said so. But I tell you from now on, you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of power and coming on the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his robes and said, He has uttered blasphemy. What further witnesses do we need? You have now heard his blasphemy. What is your judgment? They answered, He deserves death. Then they spit in his face and struck him, and some slapped him, saying, Prophesy to us, you Christ. Who is it that struck you? Now Peter was sitting outside in the courtyard, and a servant girl came up to him and said, You also were with Jesus the Galilean. But he denied it before them all, saying, I do not know what you mean. And when he went out to the entrance, another servant girl saw him and said to the bystanders, This man was with Jesus of Nazareth. And again he denied it with an oath, I do not know the man. After a little while, the bystanders came up and said to Peter, Certainly you too are one of them, for your accent betrays you. 
Then he began to invoke a curse on himself and to swear, I do not know the man. And immediately the rooster crowed. And Peter remembered the saying of Jesus, Before the rooster crows, you will deny me three times. And he went out and wept bitterly. When morning came, all the chief priests and the elders of the people took counsel against Jesus to put him to death. And they bound him and led him away and delivered him over to Pilate, the governor. Then when Judas, his betrayer, saw that Jesus was condemned, he changed his mind and brought back the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and the elders, saying, I have sinned by betraying innocent blood. They said, what is that to us? See to it yourself. And throwing down the pieces of silver into the temple, he departed and went and hanged himself. But the chief priests, taking the pieces of silver, said, It is not lawful to put them into the treasury, since it is blood money. So they took counsel and bought with them the potter's field as a burial place for strangers. Therefore that field has been called the field of blood to this day. Then was fulfilled what had been spoken by the prophet Jeremiah, saying, And they took the thirty pieces of silver, the price of him on whom a price had been set by some of the sons of Israel. And they gave them for the potter's field, as the Lord directed me. Now Jesus stood before the governor, and the governor asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus said, You have said so. But when he was accused by the chief priests and the elders, he gave no answer. Then Pilate said to him, Do you not hear how many things they testify against you? But he gave him no answer, not even to a single charge so that the governor was greatly amazed. Now at the feast, the governor was accustomed to release for the crowd any one prisoner whom they wanted. And they had then a notorious prisoner called Barabbas. So when they had gathered, Pilate said to them, Whom do you want me to release for you, Barabbas or Jesus, who is called Christ? For he knew that it was out of envy that they had delivered him up. Besides, while he was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sent word to him, Have nothing to do with that righteous man, for I have suffered much because of him today in a dream. Now the chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowd to ask for Barabbas and to destroy Jesus. The governor again said to them, Which of the two do you want me to release for you? And they said, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, Then what shall I do with Jesus, who is called Christ? They all said, let him be crucified. And he said, Why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, Let him be crucified. So when Pilate saw that he was gaining nothing, but rather than a riot was beginning, he took water and washed his hands before the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. See to it yourselves. And all the people answered, His blood be on us and on our children. Then he released for them Barabbas, and having scourged Jesus, delivered him to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the governor's headquarters, and they gathered the whole battalion before him. And they stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him. And twisting together a crown of thorns, they put it on his head and put a reed in his right hand. And kneeling before him, they mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews! And they spit on him and took the reed and struck him on the head. And when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the robe and put on his own clothes on him and led him away to crucify him. As they went out, they found a man of Cyrene, Simon by name. They compelled this man to carry his cross. And when they came to a place called Golgotha, which means place of the skull, they offered him wine to drink mixed with gall. But when he tasted it, he would not drink it. And when they had crucified him, they divided his garments among them by casting lots. Then they sat down and kept watch over him there. And over his head they put the charge against him, which read, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Then two robbers were crucified with him, one on the right and one on the left. And those who passed by derided him, wagging their heads, and saying, You who would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days, save yourself. If you are the Son of God, come down from the cross. So also the chief priests with the scribes and elders mocked him, saying, He saved others. He cannot save himself. He is the King of Israel. 
let him come down now from the cross, and we will believe in him. He trusts in God. Let God deliver him now, if he desires him. For he said, I am the Son of God. And the robbers who were crucified with him also reviled him in the same way. Now from the sixth hour, there was darkness over all the land until the ninth hour. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, that is my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And some of the bystanders hearing it said, this man is calling Elijah. And one of them at once ran and took a sponge, filled it with sour wine and put it on a reed and gave it to him to drink. But the others said, wait, let us see whether Elijah will come and save them. And Jesus cried out again with a loud voice and yielded up his spirit. And behold, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom, and the earth shook, and the rocks were split. The tombs also were opened, and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. And coming out of the tombs after his resurrection, they went into the holy city, and appeared to many. When the centurion and those who were with him keeping watch over Jesus saw the earthquake and what took place, they were filled with awe and said, Truly, it is the Son of God. There were also many women there looking on from a distance who had followed Jesus from Galilee, Galilee ministering to him, among whom were Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James, and Joseph and the mother of the sons of Zebedee. When it was evening, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who was also a disciple of Jesus. He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate ordered it to be given to him. And Joseph took the body and wrapped it in a clean linen shroud and laid it in his own new tomb, in which he had cut in the rock. And he rolled a great stone to the entrance of the tomb and went away. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary were there sitting opposite the tomb. The next day, that is after the day of preparation, the chief priests and the Pharisees gathered before Pilate and said, Sir, we remember how that impostor said while he was still alive, After three days I will rise. Therefore, order the tomb to be made secure until the third day, lest his disciples go and steal him away, and tell the people he has risen from the dead, and the last fraud will be worse than the first. Pilate said to them, You have a guard of soldiers. Go, make it as secure as you can. So they went and made the tomb secure by sealing the stone and setting a guard. This is the passion of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Having heard the account of the passion, we join together in the confession of our Christian faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, God the Father, Father Almighty. Almighty. We give heaven new, of all, of all things visible and invisible, in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not in the aim, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man. He was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again from the scriptures, and ascended into heaven. He sits at the right hand of God. He will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead. His kingdom will have no end. Believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Giver of life who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who is spoke by the prophets. And we mission not the solid church, and which one baptism for the mission of sins, I look for the resurrection of the dead, and the life for the world to come. Amen.
the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. A common phrase that you're probably hearing a lot lately is we face another month of this voluntary exile until the virus dies off is, well, what are you going to do? Untold thousands of people, including many of you sitting here this morning, are eager to do something, anything, to lessen the burden on others, to love your neighbor as yourself, and maybe even to relieve your boredom just a little bit. Despite our desire to contribute solutions, despite our empathy to the plight of others, often we'll shrug our shoulders and say, well, what can I really do? What difference can I make? On their own, sometimes our words seem meaningless and empty to ourselves. It's like biting into that chocolate rabbit on Easter morning and finding out that it's hollow. It looks good on the outside, but the inside is very disappointing. Think about now the times when a stranger has offered you words of encouragement. Think about how the weight on your shoulders was just a little bit lighter when you heard the test came back negative. The baby's perfectly healthy. You can take him home. Aren't we looking forward to the words, you can go back to your life the way it was six weeks ago, where we can finally gather like we did before. We wait for that news, the vaccine is here and it works. That kind of good news can make any load lighter. But there are words that are far more glorious than those words of any human being could ever be. And they are the words of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the words that have true power. The word of our sovereign Lord sustained his servant, the Messiah, our Savior. God sustained Jesus when Herod sought to kill him when he was a baby. The Lord sustained him in the wilderness when he went without food for 40 days and 40 nights and faced the temptation of the devil. The Lord sustained Jesus as he sweat blood in prayer in the Garden of Gethsemane. And he sustains his servant upon the cross until our salvation was accomplished. The Lord sustained Jesus' body until the third day when he rose him from the dead and ensured our eternal life in him. The words of that Old Testament reading this morning are not only the words of the prophet Isaiah, they are the words of Christ, a foretelling of the action that Christ goes through this very holy week. And they are words that Jesus speaks to us today in the situations we find ourselves in right now. Listen to them again. The Sovereign Lord has given me the capacity to be his spokesman so that I know how to help the weary. I offered my back to those who attacked, my jaws to those who tore out my beard. I did not hide my face from insults and spitting, but the Sovereign Lord helps me so I am not humiliated. For that reason I am steadfastly resolved. I know I will not be put to shame. The one who vindicates me is close by. Who dares argue with me? Let us confront each other. Who is my accuser? I lost the Who is my accuser? Let him challenge me. Look, the Lord, sovereign Lord helps me. Who dares condemn me? The word of God sustained the prophet Isaiah, just as it supported the suffering servant, our Messiah, Jesus. In Isaiah's time, the people were weary and downtrodden from living in a state of war and being held in captivity. 
God did not arbitrarily abandon them to their fate. They brought it upon themselves. As it is written, Behold, for your iniquities you were sold, and for your transgressions your mother was sent away. But the Lord did not lack mercy for them, and he is far from powerless to save them. The Almighty Lord sent his servant to provide salvation through him and through his words. God told Isaiah that he would instruct him and that his word would sustain the weary. And the Lord likewise instructed his son, and as it is again written, when you have lifted up the Son of Man, then you will know that I am He, and that I do nothing on my own authority, but speak just as the Father taught me. It is the servant of the Lord Jesus who will now suffer and become more than weary. He will die for us in agony upon the cross. Isaiah was not deterred in his mission to God's people. The Lord told him, that he will sustain him with words in his time of weariness. And in the same way, the Lord sustained his son in his time of trial and his passion. And just as the prophet of old was vindicated so that no man could argue with him and argue with the words that he proclaimed, our Lord Jesus Christ was vindicated by his glorious resurrection for our salvation on Easter morning. As Jesus said of his suffering for you and for me, now is my soul troubled, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour, but for this purpose I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. God sent his servant Isaiah to proclaim words of comfort and peace to a people exhausted with oppression and captivity. And that same word, the word now made flesh, sustains you and me. We are often weary from the circumstances of our lives. Today in particular, we're tired of being stuck at home. We're tired of being unable to go about our regular lives. We're tired and weary of taking precautions to avoid getting sick. We're exhausted. And as this time of exile stretches out, many people are not able to work. Finances and food stretch thin. And even though we know this too shall pass, the future seems uncertain. Proverbs 29.25 says, The fear of man lays a snare, but whoever trusts the Lord But the troubles of a, a world under the judgment of God, do not detour around us. This virus and its repercussions are striking very, very close to home, and we do not know what the actual damage is going to be in the end as it continues to rampage around the world. Not to change the subject, but New York State and Washington State get the least amount of sunny days a year. Although we residents of Northeast Ohio might beg to differ with them. But we know that the sun is always up there. It's shining. But sometimes we don't see it for days, even months, because of cloudy weather. God's love and care are always there for us. But we do not continuously realize that because our overwhelming fears and anxieties cloud our vision. In fact, at times, it seems like the only thing we can see are our problems. We're so worn out. But the most considerable burden that we bear is the burden of our sin and its resulting guilt. We're spiritually exhausted, wondering if God has forgiven us, if he still loves us, wondering how we can make it right with him. And we know the answer is we can't. But Jesus, the servant who suffered for us, can. And he sustains us with the very words that sustain him. He invites the weary to come to him. 
the people to whom that invitation was first offered did not have the assurance of God's forgiveness and love because they were weighed down by their legalism and their hypocrisy. But Jesus makes our burden light and our yoke easy because he assures us that our sins have been forgiven. They were atoned for by his blood on the cross, that same blood and body that he will give to us shortly on his altar. We know that we have been forgiven. Paul quoted the words of our Old Testament reading and made the point that just as the Sovereign Lord vindicated his own son so that no accusation could be brought against him, neither can any charge be made against you or me. We are God's chosen ones, justified by the blood of Christ, who even now intercedes for us. Whatever is causing our weariness at this moment, we can know that we have a Father who loves us, and He will cause all to work for our good. Today is Passion Sunday. Do you doubt the love of God? Look toward the cross. Rest assured that the words of our Savior will continue to sustain us. Words of love, forgiveness, and salvation. Are you weary? Are you tired? Look to the Lord, and he will sustain you. Amen. May the peace which passes understanding guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Um. We pray. Let us pray for the church that the Lord would defend her against all her enemies and keep her true to Jesus Christ by the power of your word and spirit. Gracious Lord, keep your scattered church in your mercy, that she may endure the assaults of the evil one and remain faithful for the sake of those numbered within your kingdom and those who have not yet heard the gospel and this brought to faith. Almighty God, by your Spirit, you have gathered us as your church and promised that wherever two or three are together in your name, there you are in our midst. Do not allow stress or disaster to distract us from the particular vocation into which you have called us to serve in the church, our homes, and our community. Grant to us every gift and blessing needful so we may honor our calling and serve you to the best of our ability. O mighty Lord, you have established the kingdom of the left and hold accountable all those who govern in this and every place. Guide our president, the members of Congress, the governor of this state, and all who may administer and judge our laws, that they would serve nobly and wisely, pursuing the path of justice and protecting the citizens of entrusted citizens. Give them the wisdom and strength needed to bring our world out of crisis and back to stability. Merciful Lord, your grace is sufficient for all our needs, and you have promised to be the strength of the living, the hope of those who fear, the healing of the ill, the fullness of those disabled, and the peace of all who are distressed. Hear us on behalf of our nation and the world, suffering pandemic and isolation. We especially pray this day for the family of Dwayne Wade, whose mother passed away this week. The family of Carol Nathano, whose mother passed away this week. Carol and her family are former members of her. The family of Bob May, whose wife also passed away this week. Bob is our person first in her condition in the family. And we continue to pray and pray for the Lord who continues to have a and we lift up all those who now live in our hearts. Lord, we pray that they may be well supplied by your grace in every time of trouble. Everlasting Father, it is your will that all should be saved and come to the knowledge of your Son by faith. Give your word success and deliver from error all those.
be with you and also with you lift up your hearts we lift them up unto the Lord let us give thanks to the Lord our God it is meet and right so to do it is truly meet right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you holy Lord almighty father everlasting God for Jesus Christ our Lord who accomplished the salvation of mankind by the tree of the cross, that, where death arose, their life also might rise again, and that the serpent who overcame by the tree of the garden, like likewise by the tree of the cross, be overcome. Therefore, with the angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, praising you now and forevermore. Amen. Our Father, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ on the same night in which he was betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take this, this is my body which is given to you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you, this cup is the new testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sin. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lord, now let us bow thy servants to pray with you according to thy word. To mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the peace of all people. The glory of thy people is Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. It was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be. Lord of God, Amen. We'll give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us with good salutary gifts. And we implore you, that of your mercy, you would strengthen us through the same, in faith toward you, and in fervent love toward one another. Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. 
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Bless we the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Um.